We are working now still on linear equations, but now looking at a table of values to write that formula from. So we are trying to write a formula. Again, y equals mx plus b is our favorite version of linear equations, okay? We are gonna be filling in the m value and the b value here. So as I set this up, I'm gonna leave a space for whatever my slope is and whatever my y-intercept is but I know I'm gonna have the Y and the X, okay? So my Y intercept, let's start with that one first, the, the B value, right? My Y intercept is where X equals zero. If I was to draw a graph of this right here where the X value is a zero, that on a graph would end up being, you know, zero, 10 would be up on the Y axis. So that is my Y intercept, okay? That's what's happening there. So I know that B is positive 10, okay? If I was to graph this again, it would cross up at positive 10. The slope, okay, is where we're going to use the rise over the run. That is a ratio that you need to learn, memorize, have it down really, really well, rise over run. So your rise, is also the change in y values, right? y2 minus y1 was at the top of that formula. Run is your change in x values, okay? Um, fancy symbol stuff. You might also sometimes, if you like Google and you're looking for help, you might see a little delta symbol. That's the Greek delta for change in y and change in x, just kind of to throw it out there. You don't have to know that. So my rise is gonna be how much are my y's changing, okay? That's where I'm gonna get the rise from. So let's see, it's going up two, and then it's going up two, and up two, and up two. So my rise for this problem is two. My run is how much my x's are changing every time. So let's see, my run over here on the x side is up three, from negative three to zero is rising three, then it goes up three, then it goes up three, then it goes up three. And this is important, okay? In order for it to be linear, there has to be a consistent rise and run, right? If I'm graphing it, it has to be rising and running the same amount in order for those dots to come out to be a nice, beautiful, uh, perfect straight line. So my rise is two, my run is three, so that means my slope is positive two thirds. It's rising up two every time, it's rising up three every time, so positive two thirds. That is your linear equation from that table, okay? So if I go to the next one, and I you feel free to pause and copy these down. Um, I wrote them ahead of time so I could go a little faster. Again, we're looking at y equals something x plus something. That's the format we're using every time, mx plus b. Well, the b value is the easiest one to see. I cross right there. My y-intercept is at negative 2, so b is negative 2. For my slope, I'm going to rise from the y's. So, uh, ooh, just kidding. That's not up one, right? From 0 to negative 1 is dropping 1 dropping one, dropping one, dropping one. Check and be sure it's consistent. On my x side, to go from negative 10 to positive five would be rising five, rising five more, rising five more, rising five more, okay? So my rise, ooh, I shouldn't have said rise over there. I'm sorry, that's confusing, isn't it? So my rise is negative one. My run for my x's is positive five. So my slope is negative one fifth. Rise from the y's, run from your x's. It's easy to remember because um, rise from your y's rhymes and then run from your x's just sounds like something funny. Somebody who is not a very good uh, boyfriend or girlfriend would say. Okay, let's see. For this one, I know I'm gonna go with y equals something mx plus b. So my y-intercept would be negative 10. And then when I go to do my rise and my run, my rise is, let's see, negative 14, negative 10, that's rising four, rising four, rising four, rising four, every time, that's a good sign. I'm running up two, 
then I'm running up three, then I'm running up two and up two. When you get this where it's not a consistent rise over run, four over two, up rise four, run three, on a graph, that's not going to be linear, right? If I go up four over two, and the next time I go up four over three, that's a little bit exaggerated, but you see that like those dots are not going to end up in a straight line. So this is actually non-linear. It is not a straight line at all. That's a problem. We can't write a linear equation unless there is a consistent rate of change. Rate of change is the same. Negative one at fifth, negative one fifth, negative one fifth, negative one fifth. That's linear. Not consistent is non-linear. Okay, let's see this one. Well, okay, I know I'm going with y equals mx plus b. The y-intercept, ooh, I can't see it here. But it's an easy enough pattern to finish, right? So like negative four, let's just continue negative three, negative two, negative one. We're gonna continue that all the way back up to zero. So every time here, we're changing by ones. Here, let's see, okay, so I went from 13 to nine, negative nine to negative five, negative five to negative one, negative one to positive three. So I'm actually, it's a changing by four every time, right? So then I'm gonna change by four. This would come up to seven. The next one would come up to 11. Then we would go to 15. Then we would go to 19. So the zero pair would actually be to positive 19, okay? Now for my slope, I got a rise from my y's. So let's see, that would be going down four right, from three down to negative one. From negative one to negative five is dropping four, dropping four, dropping four, nice and consistent, that's good. Okay, on my x side, negative four to negative five is dropping one, then we're dropping one again, then we're dropping one again, and dropping one again. Well, if I put rise over run, negative four over negative one, okay? Double negatives, actually mean that that slope is a positive four. Be careful, rise over run. So rise over run, negative four over negative one actually makes a slope of positive four, okay? Careful with that. Let's look at the next one. Um, okay, again, I'm sticking with y equals mx plus b. So the b value is plus four, okay? X still needs to be in there. Y still needs to be in there. For my slope, let's see, it's going negative 14 to negative 11 is rising three. Then from negative 11 to negative two is rising nine. This looks like it might be trouble. Negative two to positive four is going up six. Oh, whoa. And then going up three at the end. It does not look consistent. Okay, this looks nonlinear at this point, but let's see what's happening on the other side. Let's see, negative six to negative five, we're rising one. Then we rise three, then we rise two, then we rise one, okay? Well, if I start thinking about slope, rise over run. So this one's slope is three over one. This one's slope is nine over three, which simplifies to three over one, okay? Then six over two, which also simplifies to three over one. So even though it looks like it's not consistent, it's simplifying down to the same amount every time and then three over one for the last one. So if they all simplify down the same, that is the slope is three over one or three, okay? The issue with the nonlinear one up here is I would have had four over two, Okay, that simplifies to two over one. Then I have four over three, which does not simplify. So if you get two different slopes in a problem, that's when it's not linear, okay? So don't just think anytime you see something being inconsistent, it's nonlinear. You've gotta really check, because sometimes that ratio, remember slope is a ratio. If that ratio ends up being equivalent, then that's still the slope. Okay, 
It's like when we were doing slope off a graph, and if you pick two close dots, you wouldn't have to simplify. But if you pick two dots that were really far away, then you would just have to simplify it down to that smaller ratio. So just be careful on that. Okay, over here, let's see. Um, y equals, uh, I don't have my x being zero, but luckily it's a nice clean pattern where I can just back this up to zero, right? Three, six, nine, 12. So if I back up three and eight, seven, six, five, four. So if I back up one more, I get plus three for the y-intercept. Okay, there's my y-intercept. I had to follow the pattern back to the zero. And then let's see, my rise is adding one every single time. That's good. My run is adding three every single time, consistently through the whole thing. And then just put your X after your slope. Okay, one more question. Um, I don't see a y-intercept, and when I start trying to figure out what zero would be, I notice that my x's are consistent at five all the way along. X is always five. If I was to graph this, I have a dot at five, nine. Like, let's say that's five right there. Five, nine, five, eleven, five, thirteen, five, fifteen, five, seventeen. Notice what our situation is here. That is a vertical line, so that means it is a VUX scenario. That means my equation is only going to have an X in it, okay? So X equals, well, I mean, what do my X is equal? My X is equal five all the way across, okay? This is one of those special scenarios where you're, you're not going to see a Y-intercept because if I picture what the graph actually looks like, I end up with that vertical line, okay? All right, you have uh, 10 linear equations that are 10 linear tables that you need to write equations for. Um, make sure you get that done and submit it. And I hope that this helped. Good luck.